This is the A62 monitor from Andy Cine. This is a 4K HDMI touchscreen monitor. It's touchscreen. It also has LUT support, so you can load your LUTs on there and view your footage while you're using the monitor. It also has guides and histograms. It has a brightness of 1600 nit. It has HDMI input and output, and this thing runs for under $200. So there's your value proposition here is, spoiler alert, this is a pretty good monitor, especially for the price under $200 US. I think it's like roughly 150 ish currently. It may fluctuate, who knows? Go check out the affiliate link in the description below. So this is it right here. Let's open it up. It comes with this case right here. A Couple of other things that come with this. It comes with this sunshade right here. This is also part of the sunshade. Here is the monitor right here. It's pretty lightweight, it's good to use, and I actually use it all the time for, I'll show you in just a minute. But this is the monitor right here. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the specs on this in just a moment, but I wanna show you what else comes with this. But it's kinda nice that everything comes inside this package. It comes with a rechargeable battery. This right here, this HDMI cable, USB-C to USB type A, and also this tilt arm. You had a couple of other goodies in here as well. There is a disassemble wrench, and a USB-C to USB-A adapter for this cable right here and allows you to recharge the battery. So that's pretty much everything in there. So I'm gonna show you a couple of scenarios of like why and where you would need to use this. So if you're outside and it's too bright, you can put on this sunshade. You see I just snapped that right on and then you can put this sunshade right on there. It goes on via Velcro and voila. There is your sunshade and your monitor. Now, I actually forgot to show you the physical features of this device. On the top, you have function keys. You can turn touch display functionality on and off. You have a menu, you have these selectors. You can exit and also power on the device right here. That's on the top. You have four quarter 20 mounting points, one on the top, one on the right, one on the bottom, and one in the rear, one in the back. And then, so that's the top. This side, we just have that mounting point. On the bottom, you have DC out for power. You have a mounting point. You have headphone jack for monitoring. And you also have a USB-C, which you can actually power this device with USB-C and also load LUTs through there as well. Um, and then on this side of it, you have HDMI in and HDMI out and also DC in. Those are all the sides. And obviously the front is your touch screen right there. And then on the back, you have where you put your battery in, you have a mounting point. And also this right here, there is NPF bracket for attaching wireless transmitters right here. So you can actually wirelessly transmit the feed to this device. So that is the physical spec of this. So let's kind of build this out and put it back on like where and why you would use this. So a scenario would be to build out your rig. So we'd put this cable right here, HDMI in. And then because I'm extra, I've got a little extra larger battery. I think most people would actually purchase a separate battery and go a little larger on there to give you extra life there. And then we've got these set up and let's attach our tilt arm. Tilt arm is there so you can, you can tilt this up to view your picture. And what I would generally do is I would have my rig and I would attach this to this cold shoe mount right here. And all you need to do is slide this in to your cold shoe mount. Tighten that up. I have this ready to go now, and then I would plug this into my HDMI. And now I have a monitor for my cinema rig that I could take with me on the go, and I can get a 5.5 inch touchscreen display that I could see what I'm filming. So what this is good for is like, not just to see your image as you're holding the camera low or you're holding the camera far and you want more people to see, but also if you want to load LUTs in there, you could film in your S-Log profile in a flat profile, but you know, you don't want to preview that. But what the advantage of this is you can load the lot on here so that what you're seeing back is how the footage looks from the, not just the flat color profile, but the lot attached to that as well. So you kind of just see the finished product of how it's really going to look after you color grade that just a preview. And so that's an advantage of having that there. But for me, this is actually not how I use this on the daily because I don't use it like this on the daily. What I do is let's disassemble this. We're gonna remove this HDMI. We're gonna do a little inception here. Um, let me see. Let me see. We're gonna take off. We'll take off the arm. We'll take off this. Don't need that. And then we don't need the battery as well. I'm gonna push down here and release the battery. Not gonna need that. 
So I've got my bare bones monitor now. This is what I do with it. This is how I constantly use it, is I put this tripod in the bottom and on the back, I've got this little um, battery adapter that I just input into here. But what's unique about this is I have a DC in. I plug this into here. So there's my power. It's constantly feeding this power. You could also do this with USB-C, but I already had one of these lying around, so I'll use this instead. And then what I'll do is I'll prop this up and angle it towards me. And then where's my cable at? Okay, there's my HDMI cable. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna insert this into the HDMI in, and you're gonna see how I use this as an everyday monitor because it's awesome. And look, you can actually see what my monitor looks like. I'm using it as a monitor for my top cam and it is wonderful. So what I could do here though is that my camera is obviously upside down is what I'll do is I'll double tap on the screen and I'll go to image and I'm going to image flip and I'm gonna rotate horizontal and vertical. And now as I did that, obviously my menu is all upside down, but my picture here is right side up. So I could see everything on screen and I can monitor this. What I'll do is I'll actually have this set up right in front of me, like kind of below the camera there. And so I can see my top down shot as well as while I'm filming in front of me. This is why I love this monitor. And if I wanted to, I could load LUTs on there. Okay, I figured out a way that we can import LUTs here. You can import up to 50 LUTs. And so what I did is I put it on this SD card right here with this USB-C adapter, and I had to format on my Mac to MS-DOS. It's the only way I got it to work. So now that I have them loaded on here, got some LUTs loaded on here from Tepo Hapoya, and we're gonna use those as an example. So I'll double tap on the screen, and then from here, I'm gonna go to User Options. I'll go to LUT, the very top one, and then let's confirm here on LUT Import. That'll search and scan this SD card right here. And let import, it kind of shows me all of them. It kind of rotates through by itself. I'm not really sure what it's doing here. It's rotating through all of them right there. You see all 10. It says finish. And now it has imported all of those LUTs from my SD card. So the Cinema LUT 2 here. Actually, let's turn the LUT on. And then look at this side of the screen here. We go to Cinema LUT 2. It's my favorite one. That's how it looks. Cinema LUT 4, we can kind of cycle through. Shout out to Teppo. He's got some great LUTs here. But also if we go S-Log 3, you'll see the difference here on the right side of the screen. But also if I turn the LUT off by tapping off, you'll see how flat everything is. There we go. I just kind of moved my camera right there on the screen. So if I turn off the LUT, so I have everything off the screen now. So the LUT is off if I turn it on. You'll see how dark everything gets, kind of full color there, off and on. Let's go to Cinema LUT 2. I have it off, I'm gonna turn it on. You'll see that there, off and on. But also let's do this, I have myself on the screen. If I tap off, you'll see how flat everything went. Back on, and now you'll see the LUT. We're gonna go up here to S-Log 3, Rec 709. There you see color come back in my face because I'm switching through those LUTs. So that is how you use custom LUTs on here. There's this great feature here with Assist that gives me all of my waveforms, my histograms and whatnot. If I turn on all waves, oops, excuse me. If I go to all waves and I turn it on, you'll see all of the different features I get here for measuring how the picture is. I can turn off my waves and it goes back to that standard screen there. Marker, you could show grids. So I could do three by three, seven by seven, and so on. You could do safe frames. So show me my safe zones there in case you have a television or whatever you're showing on is gonna crop off. Safe zones right here. You could do center marker, showing you that's the center. Green, red, change the color there. Turn that off and ratio marker. That's kind of a cool one. You can show like cinema, how much you want it there and so on. You could also change the transparency here. I could crank this up. That kind of darkens that a little bit. It's kind of cool. So that's how your picture looks. And also if, if I just touch the screen and I scroll up, I can turn the volume up and down with my feedback if I have a headphones plugged in. You can change aspect ratio. You can change the anamorphic. So I could turn on anamorphic and you can see it's kind of squeezing my image there. 
If I have a picture coming through that's already squeezed, this will de-squeeze it for us. You've just got so many different options here with this monitor to work with. It's very versatile. So as you can see, like these are features that I've seen in like way more expensive monitors. This gets the job done and it's been working for me perfectly. If you wanna learn more about the Andy Cine 4K monitor, this 5.5 inch monitor, I'll have an affiliate link in the description for you to check it out. I recommend checking it out. Honestly, for under 200 bucks, I don't know if you could beat this. This is a pretty good product. This is actually a product that I use, which is why I'm showing you this today. So if you found value in this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I don't remember what else. There's like a lot of other things that you can do with YouTube, but do all that so that you can learn more about camera tips, tech tips and such. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.